Let's talk about conditional operations. How do we perform conditional operations? So what is the con conditional structure in the programming language that you're aware of? Hmm? Like in Python, huh? if else the structure, which takes the decision and then move accordingly. So conditional operations helps us move or execute a certain piece of code, or we generally refer as branch instructions. OK? So if the instruction condition is true, it branch or jump to a certain um, location of the code. Otherwise, it continues sequentially. So we have these branch instructions. The BEQ corresponds to branch if equal. So branch if the value in RS1 and RS2 are equal, branch to L1. Now what is L1? So L1 is the label. It's not any instruction. It's a label or the address of the instruction which we want to execute. Okay. So be any branch if not equal, when these two values are not equal, branch if less than, if RS1, the contents of RS1 is less than RS2. Similarly, branch if greater or equal, RS1 is greater or equal to RS2. Less than equal, uh, yeah, but I, I don't think we have it. But I, I think, yes, BLE, it must be. I need to check the reference of all the instructions, yeah. So example of a label instruction. Again, remember, label is itself not an instruction. So for example, this instruction, BEQ, RS1, RS2, L1. If this condition satisfy, the control will jump to L1, with, and this instruction will be executed. If the condition does not satisfy, instruction execute sequentially from top to bottom. Okay? So L1 is just representing an address of this location. Although we are not specifying the address of all the locations, but it is compiled by the compiler. It could be any address, uh, whatever is assigned to com by the compiler. But we as a human, we generally refer it as label. Okay? And branch compare two registers. You cannot compare a value with a constant value with any register in branch instruction. So let's take an example. If you are given a task to convert this piece of code into an assembly program, RIS-5 assembly program. And again, you're, you're, you will be required to do that very often throughout this course. So understand the basics so that you will be able to do it very frequently, I mean, easily uh, by yourself. So first of all, rule of thumb, when whatever condition is given to you, while writing a C, uh, assembly code, you convert that condition into negative. So for example here, if i equal equals j, okay, then execute this thing. What you write is, First of all, try to convert it as a pseudocode. Pseudocode is not a real code, but you convert it into, an, into a form which you can translate into a program later. So here what I'm doing is if i is not equal to j, why not I'm checking for the equal condition? Can anybody answer this? So we have BEQ, we have BNE, yes. Yes. Yeah, because it takes a branch. Yes. Yes. So in other words, I would say that in C language or in Python, when the condition satisfies, the next instruction, immediate instruction, is executed, mm -hmm. right, in the block. And in here, in assembly language, what does it do? When the condition satisfies, it takes a branch, it jumps to a piece of code. Otherwise, it goes sequentially. So this is the reason why we check for the negative condition. If i is not equal to j, which in this case, if this condition does not satisfy, it will execute the next line. If this condition satisfy, which when i is not equal to j, then it should continue from here to go to skip and whatever the code written here. Okay, so always remember, if you have a condition given like i equal equals j, 
you can vary into i not equal to j okay and write the code like this and then if you have given if i is not equal to j then check for the if i is equal equal j so again label is not an instruction it is the location or the address of an instruction in the in the memory okay we have a memory big memory uh, in our system the we categorize it uh, as an instruction memory where the instructions are stored we categorize it differently as a data memory where the data is stored. Every location has an address. So let's try converting this according to this pseudocode. Let's try converting it into um, into a RISC five code. So assume that I, J, G, H, and F are stored in these registers. Okay. So what would you write first? So in order to check this condition, you should be writing a corresponding instruction B and E, branch if not equal, and what would be the register value? I and J are stored in X22 and X23. So you will write B and E, X22, X23. If this condition is not equal, which means that I and J are not equal, then jump to skip. Means that do not execute the next instruction. Okay, x19, x20, and x21. x19, x20, and x21 corresponds to f equals g plus h. Okay, and what is the address of a skip? It is calculated by the assembler. We do not need to worry about it. While writing a code, you would write a skip or you give a label and you give it a label here, it will automatically be converted by, um, uh, by the assembler. Are you guys busy in something? I mean, are you guys following up? Okay, great. So let's make a little bit complicated code. Instead of having only if block, we have an if else block. Okay, so we have, once the condition satisfy, it, it takes a branch to perform addition. If the condition does not satisfy, it performs subtraction. And in the end, it exits. So pseudocode, start off from where? What, what condition you should be checking for? If you were to write a pseudocode, if i is not equal to j, go to else, not hell, go to else, okay? Else is here where you are performing uh, g minus h, and this is what it is supposed to be doing. If the condition does not satisfy then it automatically execute the next instruction that is written. So the instructions are executed in flow from top to bottom, unless if the branch is taken. Okay, so suppose that a long piece of code is written and the program has reached this point. If the condition does not satisfy, it will execute the next instruction, which is exactly this thing. And if the condition satisfy, it jump to else block, which is this, and then start executing a point onwards. Now here, when this instruction is executed in your program, in your C program or Python program, you need to ensure that, and we know that um, when we write this, this condition is executed, then else log is not executed. But in uh, assembly, you need to specify after executing this, go to exit, okay? Otherwise, it is going to execute this next instruction also, which means that no matter what, your both cases are executed. So we should not forget to skip the else branch. Any question? So here, now here, I have just mentioned it in, in, in the pseudocode form, go to exit, but there is no instruction called go to. There is one in C, but uh, not in assembly. How do we jump to exit? Suppose exit is written here. How do you think we can jump to exit? We have studied uh, one important register, X0. Branch if, what branch instruction are you referring to? 
BEQ. Branch F equal what? And X Z. Exactly. Thanks. So branch F equal X zero, X zero, X Z. It is unconditionally exiting the next instruction from this loop. Okay? So X zero, the contents are zero. And again the contents are zero. It, this condition is going to satisfy anyway. So this is how we can ex use X zero register to make an exit from the series of instructions. Okay. If you have any questions, you can ask me either through this or through, uh, I mean, in person. Yes. So for branches, like it's kind of checking if you have or something. It really kind of works backwards. So it takes the two elements and checks it, and then if it comes out as false, it kind of just goes on where it is false. No, if it turns out to be true, okay. if the condition satisfy. So for example, here. Uh, B N E branch if not equal. So what it checks the contents of X22 and X23. If the contents are not equal, then means the condition satisfying. Mm -hmm. And then when the condition satisfy, it will jump to else block. Okay. If the condition does not satisfy, if the contents are equal, for example, here, look, uh, Karima. If the contents are equal, x22 and x23, what is x22? i and x23 is j. So when the contents are equal, it means this condition is satisfying. And we are supposed to be executing addition operations. So when the condition is not satisfied, it is going to execute the next instruction. Okay, it's the other way around. As you used to write code in Python, when the condition satisfies, it executes the following instruction. So here, if the condition does not satisfy, it will not take the branch. It will take the branch only when the condition satisfy, when x22 is not equal to x23 in this case. Here, b branch if equal, as the, as the instruction is saying, branch, take a branch only if the contents of x0 and x0 are equal, which will always be equal, right? Which will always be 0 and 0. So it will take a branch to jump to exit. Yes, that's why we flip it in the in the pseudo code. Please feel free to ask questions, um, and then we are going to have an activity shortly. Yep. Yeah. So. So first of all, um, why are we doing this? The instructions are executing in order from top to bottom, okay, in this program. So here, assume that the condition does not satisfy. X22 and X23 are not equal, okay? When they are not equal, what will happen? It is going to execute the next instruction. Okay, which means that if i and j are not equal, then it is going to execute, uh, yeah, so the next instruction, which is the else block. So if x22 and x23 are not equal, it will take an else block, which is sub x19, x20, and x21. And suppose that the contents are equal, okay, which means that this condition is not satisfying because it is checking for branch if not equal. So if, for example, x22 and x23 are equal, which is i and j are equal, it is going to execute add instruction, okay, which is f equals g plus h. When this executes the next, uh, this instruction, if we do not have this instruction in between, it is naturally going to execute the next instruction because the instructions are executed in order, in sequence. But we do not want this instruction to be executed because this is executed already, because this is a uh, conditional block. This condition has already been executed, so we do not want this operation to be executed anymore. So we need to have a branch instruction in between to skip this part, okay? And that's why we are having BEQ, branch if equal, x0, x0, which means that we are comparing, or we can also have x22, x22 because whatever the contents of x0 or x22, 
it will remain same, right? You are comparing x0 with x0, which will always be same. So this condition is going to satisfy, and the control will jump to exit block without executing this one, okay? You could have simply written BEQ x22, x22. That would also satisfy the same thing, okay?